Welcome to Planet Rackin' Tour, where we who tell stories rule this world. I am Yuck Nasty, and I am your guide into our world that's filled with sights and sounds, both wonderful and frightening. Frightening. Filled with sights and sounds, both wonderful and frightening. Frightening. There was a knock on the door. Sam begrudgingly got up from his couch and walked over to his door. The light red door clashed with the brown of the walls. He had meant to paint the door, but had never gotten around to it. Sam reached the door, reached for the doorknob. On the other side of the door was... No one. Sam looked around only to confirm that there was nobody there. Damn kid, Sam thought, as he closed the door. Just as he began to walk away, a knock came from the door again. Sam turned to the door, confused. There hadn't been anybody there in the house, right? Sam turned to the door and he opened it again, but just like the last time, there was no one there. Again, Sam closed the door and began to walk away, only to hear a knock echo from behind the door again anger began to rise in Sam as he walked back to the door he decided that he was going to give whoever was playing this prank on him a piece of his mind on the other side of the door stood somebody the appearance of someone at the door caught Sam off guard Sam opened his mouth to start his rant against the man the words died on his lips as he looked at the man. He was wearing what was once a blue t-shirt and jeans, but the color had long since faded. There were cuts all over his mangled body. His face was elongated with one eye dangling from the socket, while the other one was nowhere to be found. After several seconds of staring, the thing slowly raised its mangled arm towards Sam. A scream of terror escaped Sam's lips as he slammed the door in this thing's face. He stood there for a minute, Sam did. He had begun to think he was just seeing things when another knock came from beyond the door. This time, the knocks were followed by a voice. Please come out. We're so hungry. The thing said slowly, its voice seeming to echo throughout the house. Sam quickly locked the door and ran through his house and into his bedroom. There he threw anything he could up against the door. After hours of sitting in his room, Sam heard a knock come from his door. But to Sam's horror, it wasn't coming from the front door. It was coming from behind his closet door. That was Knock 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 from the No Sleep subreddit. We have found amazing stories from there. Shout out to all of you authors. Our next story is about how quickly the world can come together and just as quickly fall apart. We hope you enjoy Before and After by Alec Gearhart. Before and After by Alec Gearhart. Before they came, our buildings stood tall. Our trees were green and Lady Liberty's face shone brightly towards the Atlantic. Before they came, the world was connected and a child could access all information in the palm of their hands. Before they came, father fought with mother when she ignored him for a scream. Before they came, I wrestled with brother for a controller and made his nose bleed. 
Before they came, our dining room table gathered dust, and our books petrified themselves to our shelves. Before they came, father lived on a couch in our living room, and mother went out alone dressed in short skirts, laughing at her phone. Before they came, I drew a picture for father, but he would not see it until the game was done. Before they came, all was cold and no one knew one another's pain. But after they came, all our buildings turned to ash. Our trees burned black and Lady Liberty's face lay drowning in the Atlantic. After they came, the world lost connection and no information could be gathered beyond the rubble. After they came, father hugged mother as she wept and looked to his eyes for comfort. After they came, brother and I shared scraps of food and ammunition. After they came, we played board games together in the bunker. and our books became worn and frayed. After they came, mother held father as they told stories by the fire and sang. After they came, I drew up a plan to attack them and father displayed it high. After they came, our home was warmed by the fire and we took care of one another's needs. But after they left, our buildings were rebuilt. New trees were planted, and Lady Liberty was hoisted high towards the Atlantic again. After they left, the networks were patched and all information flowed again. After they left, father fought with mother when she ignored him for a scream. After they left, I slandered my brother to win the election. After they left, our dining room table was replaced with a rug and all our books were burned and replaced with screams. After they left, mother divorced father and he wept for her to return. After they left, I called father for advice, but he would not answer till she returned. After they left, I got on my knees and prayed they would soon return. I would like to take this time and give a special shout out all of our authors and to everyone that is listening and wherever you are listening to Planet Wrecking Tour give us a like and subscribe and leave a review our last story of the night is The Misadventures of Tom Jones Time Traveler by Sean Williams This is The Misadventures of Tom Jones, Time Traveler, being a dialogue between two hemispheres of the author's brain that is neither uncommon nor blessed with a happy ending. By Sean Williams. Wow. Best dream ever. Are you getting it down? Well, it practically writes itself beloved literary hero in an adventure leaping between epochs instead of bedrooms and don't forget the bit where tom vanishes from molly's arms and lands naked on the western front that's hot picaresque bill dans roman the like of which has never been seen time travel with titillation is what it is don't be vulgar he jumps a century every time he comes it's so vulgar, 
It's brilliant. It's a metaphor for generational memory and youth Smith spent passions, uh, taking the grandest themes of fielding and wells and, and mashing them together in a story that made you sweaty. Don't deny it. I was there. Yes, but that's not the point. We want to sell, don't we? That is the point. We still want to be about something. Something more than the crap you're always filling our head with. Oh, here we go. You always look down on the stories I like. So what if sometimes you have a spaceship in them? It's not my fault that when you see the spaceship, all you see in them is giant space cigars. Well, everything's a metaphor for what? The overreaching of the Jacobite Revolution? Yeah, sure. This is just like the time you convinced me that teleporters deconstruct contemporary notions of identity and embodiment. Well, they do. And I still maintain that we had a perfectly good story until you added all the violence. Attract the male audience, you said. Help it sell, you said. Did it? No, but exactly. We're never going to sell anything at the rate we're going. Well, not if you keep sucking the life out of it. Not if you keep dragging everything down into the gutter. Philistine. Ignoramus. God, this is exhausting. The argument, or because it's three in the morning, and we drank too much tequila again. We take the fifth. <laughs> All right, let's sleep on it. Then, see what we've got in the morning. Maybe this time we'll figure it out. Deal. Good night. Sweet dreams. Seriously? Well, there you go. Another trip to Planet Rack on tour. On behalf of myself and our other two fine raconteurs, Papa Dave and Bobby Anthem, we would like to thank you for listening. All of the stories presented on Planet Raconteur are used by permission or are in the public domain. Check out the show notes for the details on the authors, their websites, and their other releases. Hey, much love, and thanks again visiting the Planet Raconteur.